Um, so I was asked to take a look at a, a, a problem with a customer um, where some of their Active Directory wasn't working. And um, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, but I want to share this, not to you know, point a finger at anybody for, for doing something wrong, um, but to highlight why things break um, if, if things aren't set up correctly. So, so we'll use this as a bit of an example. Um, so we've gone down the route of going from uh, wildcard discovery um, to application segmentation, which is absolutely the right thing to do as they, you go through and define um, um, active directories and application segments. Um, so here we've got our wildcard, star.net, adds.net. Um, they've defined um, their active directory servers here and said we just want to do those for port 3389 because we want to apply a policy on who can RDP to them. And we've also defined the active directory servers as well as the, the root here um, and, and the TCP ports and everything. Um, for for the active actual active directory so so all of that is is correct um the, you've got the high ports here for the rpc um for 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 group policy and things and, and binding so so most of this looks um fine i don't have any issues with that um but what um what actually concerns me is the server groups now invariably they should be essentially the same server group. So server group defines which connectors are going to be used to service these requests. And you know, generally you think this is this is set up, but as we dig into this, we see we, we can find out why there is a problem with actually getting the, the Active Directory updates. So if I look at the server group here for Active Directory prod servers, you can see they've defined servers here. Um, we've got the connector groups correctly, but we've then got a, gr a bunch of servers to find rather than using dynamic server discovery. Whereas on this one here, which is your, your wildcard, um, they've also created a different um, server group, um, again with different servers, both by FQDN and IP address in there. Um, and here is our catch-all wildcard, start on their ADDS, um, which has actually got dynamic server discovery. So if stuff falls out of these, um, as in it's not just port one for, for the DNS <laughs> resolution, um, then, then it'll hit this one. Now, so here's the thing. If we deleted these um, four segments, um, Active Directory would, would, would work perfectly because it would hit this wildcard and it would use the dynamic server discovery, which is what we want. Um, so let's come across here and have a look at the, um, the server groups. So here we've got, uh, let's have a look, uh, the Active Directory servers, um, which is assigned to those, um, those, those application segments. And they've defined each and every single one of the servers. This is not what server groups do. Okay, server groups should invariably, 99.9% .9 of the time, be doing dynamic server discovery. If you define the servers here, what will actually happen is um, we, will we will treat each and every one of these as being identical and we will load balance across them. So even though the, the user might have re re DNS resolved or you know, done their CL that bind or whatever to AMCON ADDC1, when they hit the application segment and then the application segment says, which server group should I use? And it uses this um, static server definition. It will then load balance across these, treating them all as equal. So the user might have DNS resolved this, but could end up on this server over here, which is clearly not the same server, is geographically distant, will be in a different active directory site, and will therefore cause problems. So the, 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 the fix to this specific problem would be to edit this and turn on dynamic server discovery. We shouldn't have any servers defined for this organization. There is literally zero, nearly zero reasons why you would define servers. So this specific customer's active directory problems are caused by the definition of servers and the application of those servers 
in a server group and therefore the load balancing across them. Um, like I said, nearly zero reasons why we would ever define servers. And so this is, I don't know if the customer has done this because they've misunderstood um, or whether Zscaler has advised them to do this or we've, we've done some something um, for some reason and we've then you know gone down a, 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 a path that was incorrect. But um, I wanted to highlight that you know, defining servers and, and implementing them this way will actually cause a, a load of problems. So we need to, to pare this back. Um, hopefully this is useful, you know, I'm not pointing a finger at you know, anything that's specifically done wrong, but we need to resolve this.